Did you play the 2020 release Ghost of Tsushima? Did it consume your life? Did you wonder to yourself, I wonder if I can make Jin Sakai an Elden Ring? Then sit down and shut up because it's time to learn how to be the Ghost of Tsushima in the lands between. Whenever I start any build video, I need to unpack what that character has the ability to do. So, Jin Sakai is a samurai. Check. See? We're already off to a great start. He also has a horse, a big sword, a little sword, the ability to parry, a bow, a flaming weapons, poison, a grapple hook, haikus, and no dad. That last one's gonna be tough. So, we have our list of things to try and put together. Let's start with some of the easier things to tackle. The weapons. Our big sword is going to be the Nagakiba. The Nagakiba is the largest katana in the entire game and follows the scientific principle of bigger weapon means better weapon. Our Ash of War is going to be unsheathed because it mirrors Jin's own EI techniques when he is dueling other Ronin. It is also drastically OP. Unsheath gives katanas the staggering ability of colossal weapons while still being able to capitalize on attack windows that only faster weapon classes could take advantage of. Is that stupid? Yes. Should we abuse it? Yes! Not only is the Nagakiba an impressive obelisk of phallic overcompensation, but it also gets impressive scaling when switched to quality. I think this aligns with Jin's character because in Ghost of Tsushima, not only is Jin a skilled swordsman, but he also is able to scale mountains indefinitely, which means he's pretty fucking strong. Our little sword is going to be the Mizen Cord. Now, you may be asking, why are we using a French dagger in a build inspired by Japanese soldiers? Don't you know that a Japanese dagger exists in this game already? Yes, I know there is a Japanese dagger that is culturally appropriate, but it's already going to be difficult enough to ensure that from stealth, you are one shot killing as many people as possible. So am I going to select the culturally appropriate Wakazashi with a crit boost of 100 or the absolute Plow King Mizen Cord with a 140 crit multiplier? I'm pretty sure if Jin had access to this weapon in Ghost of Tsushima, you'd see him wearing a beret, eating a baguette, and chain smoking cigarettes outside of the Eiffel Tower because this weapon is a heat seeker missile for prostate stabbing. But not all is lost for the Wakazashi. One of the core mechanics from Ghost of Tsushima that is missing in our build is parrying. The Wakazashi comes with the parry ability. You see where I'm going with this? That's right. Put the Wakazashi in one of your slots, attempt to parry once, get destroyed, and immediately unequip it to remove the temptation again. Our next weapon slot is going to be the bow, and it's going to knock out two birds with one stone, because we're going to be using the serpent bow, which also helps us achieve the poison element. Not only do we get a ranged option, but we also get a semi-reliable way to activate poison. And I do mean semi-reliable, because most enemies are really good at dodging the direct arrow fire. What it is really good for, though, is grinding out runes on Chicken Senpai outside of Mogwin Palace. Now, onto our incantations. We're going to need Blood Flame Blade to mirror Jin's flame weapon skill. If you're looking to min-max, you can also add Flame Grant Me Strength and, of course, always grab Flame Cleanse Me. I just use the Finger Seal. There may be better ones, but the increase is probably pretty marginal, so I wouldn't sweat it too much. As long as you have enough firepower to reenact Sherman's March to the Sea, you'll be okay. Now, the grapple hook is gonna be a little hard to figure out, but usually in Ghost of Tsushima, the grapple points are located underneath bridges. So I figured I'd try and research some methods of underbelly bridge traversal. Maybe if I just position myself here and if I just... <laughs> Now, for the haikus, there are no in-game haiku points like there are in Ghost of Tsushima, but that's not stopping you from finding your own nice view, busting out your own pen and paper, and writing one up. I've got one written for you as an example. Ranala's big feet. Melania knows defeat. Radon gives the de- All right, so far we've knocked everything off of my list. The only thing left is... No dad. In Ghost of Tsushima, Jin's dad abandoned him. To be fair, his dad also abandoned breathing, walking, and talking, but it still lumps Jin's trauma solidly in the abandoned father category. Now the problem is that our character doesn't have a male creating force in their life. Wait a minute. I'm the creator. I'm a male. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, Jen, don't worry. I'm just going out to get some milk. I'll be back in no time. Don't you sweat it, kiddo.
For the finals on our equipment, we'll check out the talisman selection. We'll be rocking first and foremost, the dagger talisman. This talisman is trying to increase our ability to get one-shot criticals off of the Mizen. Miyazaki does not want you to kill everything in one hit, so we have to stack as much bullshit as we can in our favor so that we can achieve our dream of killing things in one hit. And 17% additional crit damage is nothing to scoff at. In a similar vein, our next talisman, the Ritual Sword Talisman, will further boost our damage by 10% when we're at max health. And you may be thinking, gee, that activation condition means I have to never get hit. But don't worry, you're playing a Soulsborne game, a trivially easy game where nobody gets hit, ever. Also, you're playing a stealth character, so they aren't going to have a chance to hit you before you have shoved the full wrath of a Frenchman on a nicotine clone so far up their ass that they start dispensing enough liquid to give the French Riviera a run for its money. But if the idea of being a sneaky assassin doesn't appeal to you, then maybe I can interest you in something else, like playing with the large club, or playing with magic, or using sandpaper as toilet paper and going in f But in situations where you do get discovered, the next talisman will come in handy. The Shard of Alexander comes with all the benefits of killing your best friend. Namely, that you have killed your best friend. So you think some punk bitch soldier of Godric is going to cause me some emotional pause? No, I've, I've killed, killed my, my best, best friend. friend. The Talisman gives you a 15% attack boost on your Ash of War skills, meaning that you are now playing with what I like to call Big Weeaboo Energy. Congratulations, you've now unlocked your fantasy of doing this. <laughs> the goal of non-stealth combat is to use Unsheath. That's it. I guess we can talk about the final talisman now, which is flexible. You can either use the green turtle talisman, Radagon's sword seal, the kindred of rot exaltation, or one of the dex slash strength boosting talismans. I'm partial to the green turtle talisman. This keeps stamina from being a limiting factor, but if you want to make the Nagakiba go burr, then knock yourself out with one of the direct stat boosting options. I've included the kindred of rot exaltation for a more thematic purpose. The theory is that you could open a fight with poison and then carry the damage boost throughout the remainder of the boss fight. In reality, most enemies are going to just juke your arrows, so if you want an option that'll really piss you off, then go ahead and pick this one. Now that we've gotten through the equipment basics, let's take a look at the character's final stat sheet. My builds run up to rune level 160, and that's the level that you can reach just by exploring everything in the game, but this build can also be comfortably played around rune level 120, which is what I have shown on the screen. So, there you have it. You can, in fact, play Ghost of Tsushima in Elden Ring. The moral of the story, the big sword go burr, the French dagger's OP, don't use the kindred of rod exultation, and most importantly, smash the freaking subscribe button.